Hi everybody, uh, my name is Connor and for the last couple of years I've been working on the Water Lives project. Um, Water Lives essentially uh, worked in terms of an oral history and storytelling project about the natural border that existed between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. That photograph was actually taken on the last day that the border was removed uh, near Donegal. So what was the aim of the project? Basically what we wanted to do was to take the stories and experiences of those living within the border region during the Troubles to make sure they're captured, replicated and shared in innovative ways that are accessible to both new and wider audiences, not just in Ireland but also internationally. So how are we going to do that? Very, very simply, we created six 30-minute documentary films that was hosted on our website, along with seven viral videos to allow people to share via social media. We interviewed throughout the project 91 people. We also used new technologies to tell and share stories via the website and app, e and social media that I'll talk about. And we also organised 40 public events. These were public events of which the films and the local communities were screened, as well as information road shows about the project. So that's the area that the border region covered in Northern Ireland, and that's the area where the stories are based. Historically in Northern Ireland, oral history projects have concentrated on the urban area of Northern Ireland. So it's con concentrated in either Belfast, Derry, or Open Derry. This is the first project that talked about the rural area, the interface area between Northern Ireland and the south of Ireland. The first thing we did was to do a purpose built website. The website holds all six films along with 20 extended interviews of other participants' stories on the films. As well as that, we have an interactive timeline detailing the history of the border during the 20th century, along with some information on the actual areas itself. We developed an app to allow people to access those stories on the go, and also to find out more information about each of the areas via GPS. We also used social media in terms of integration within the app to allow people to tweet whenever they're there and use social media. We used the e-learning. We had over 40 hours of footage of people telling priceless stories. We felt there was some way of getting that communicated into the e-learning process. The e-learning is free. Um, it was launched in September and it concentrates on remembering, renewal and reconstruction. There is also an element of the e-learning that allows people to upload their own stories as well via photographs and music of their own choice. And finally, with regards to our social media, as you can see, we love our infographics of Border Lives. And we use this quite a lot in order to promote the website, particularly for the audience. The audience have been really wanted to engage with both internationally, particularly the Irish diaspora that moved from Northern Ireland as a result of the Troubles, but also with regards to new and younger generation of people. And how we did that was we ran a number of online media campaigns that was highlighted by the national media in Ireland which we got a huge number of interaction and a huge number of people posting their own border stories. So in terms of impact, I'm going to read through all of this, but just to give you an idea, the project was officially launched, and our products were launched in September. So 1,400 people attended the public events, but over 8,500 people have viewed the, uh, the films online via our Vimeo channel. Whereas over 30,000 people have accessed the website, over 5,000 people have accessed the e-learning, and we also have estimated a social media reach of the project of around 400,000. How did we do this? Number of, number of real principles in terms of engagement, going out and meeting local people, in terms of transparency. Social media was a really effective way of showing people what the work of those we were doing, as well as also in terms of our steering committee. Trust and ethical. Each of our participants went through a process of about three to four hours of interviews with regards to meetings with them to build up that rapport. And each one of our participants had final cut and final say in what went into their interview. I'm going to leave you back, there's an independent evaluation in terms of the project that was done. I'm happy enough to email it to anybody that's particular interest. But essentially what the project says is what the lessons that we did with border lives in Northern Ireland can also be replicated to other conflict zones around the world. That's our website, um, that's our Facebook page, our Twitter handle, I have brochures in here available as well too for people who want to find out more information you can give me a shout at the copy break. And as well as that, for people who don't have access to internet, I have DVDs of all six films and some of the interviews. If you want to make yourself known to me during the copy break, I'll be more than happy to distribute it. Thank you.